Welcome to a large model showman's engine. This one is part 33. Finishing making the steam raising blower adapter. I really appreciate devices that save time. And this rotary table saves me a lot of time. No real marking out required. You just put the part on it, rotate it. Then just read the dial on the base of the rotary table. Rotate the table to where you want it to be. It's calibrated in the degrees of a circle, which is 360 degrees. So by using a small amount of maths, you can drill the holes where you want. I need to drill four holes in this brass ring to mount it to the aluminium part that I featured in the last episode. I first of all set the rotary table to zero degrees. It isn't a digital readout or anything clever. They're just graduations that are marked in degrees around the edge of the table low down. And fastened to the base is a pointer, so you just align the pointer with the number of degrees that you want. In order to drill four holes, you need to set the rotary table first of all to zero degrees. Then using the clamps, you lock the table in position and drill the first hole. I'm using a centre drill first for maximum accuracy. After drilling the first hole, you slacken off the clamps and rotate the table to 90 degrees. Retighten the clamps and drill the second hole. Slacken them off, set the table to 180 degrees. Retighten the clamps, drill another hole, and then repeat the process, but this time move it to 270 degrees. So all you're doing is rotating the table at 90 degree intervals because 490s equals 360. It's quite straightforward, particularly if the number of holes you want in the part divide into 360. It only gets complicated when you're doing things like gear cutting or anything that doesn't divide well into 360. If you want more complexity then you use dividing plates. Some came with this rotary table but I'm just going to leave them in the box because I've never had any need to cut any gears. Rotary tables used to be fantastically expensive but now they're really cheap. Possibly the quality is not as good as in the old days but they do the job and they're especially good and time-saving for doing simple jobs like this. The next part of the job involves mounting this brass plate to the top of the aluminium part. I've applied some marking out blue, and now I'm holding the part in position and scribing through the holes. But then I had a better idea. I fitted a 964 twist drill into my small Bosch electric drill. 964 is clearance size for a 4BA bolt. I'm holding the piece of brass very firmly against the aluminium and just spotting the holes with this drill bit. Now I just need to go over to the drilling machine and drill the holes one eighth of an inch diameter in the aluminium part. And now it's tapping time. What am I doing here? Well, I've just dipped the tap in an aerosol can lid which contains some white spirit. Paraffin, white spirit or even WD-40 is quite a good cutting lubricant for aluminium. I drilled the holes in the aluminium quite deep for a couple of reasons. One is I need to fit long bolts without shortening them. And I just happen to have quite a lot of countersunk 4BA bolts that are a bit long. The other reason is to allow some of the swarf from the tapping process to drop to the bottom of the hole. But when tapping it's still two or three turns in and then one turn in the opposite direction to clear the chips. Aluminium is very easy to thread. It's quite a soft metal but it can grab the tap, and if it does that, when you're trying to wind out the tap, you do risk breaking it. Especially when you're tapping blind holes as deep as this. The tapping technique, and the type of lubricant to use, very much depends on the metal. For instance, you don't need any lubricant with brass, or cast iron, but sometimes with brass, if the tap starts to squeak, apply a little bit of oil. This will help the job along and reduce the risk of snapping off the tap in the work. The first miniature locomotive that I ever built was a Martin Evans Simplex, very similar to the one that I'm currently working on in another series. I'd fully machined the cylinder, and all I had to do was mount the steam chest to the cylinder. So I marked it out, drilled the holes, and eventually started the tapping job down into the top of the port face on the cylinder. Everything was going well until I dropped the cylinder onto the bench by accident. The tap broke off inside the hole, I tried to demolish it with a centre punch, but ended up having to enlarge the hole to get it out. By drilling quite a few small holes, 
all the way round where the tap was. The tap finally came out of the hole, but it was the right mess, it was far too big, so what did I do about it? I drilled out the hole tapping size for naught BA. Then I made a cast iron plug, which I then threaded with the die to naught BA as well. At the time I used Loctite 601, and so I put some of this in the hole and screwed in the piece of cast iron. I removed the excess piece of cast iron sticking out of the hole by filing, followed by emery cloth. Then I remarked it out, redrilled the hole, and tapped it without event. An invisible, successful repair. Time now to remove the marking out blue. I really don't need to do this because no one's going to know it's there, but I do, so I'm removing it using some methylated spirit. Any alcohol would do. Even 16 year old malt whiskey would probably work. But no, I'm going to use methylated spirit. Now it's time to screw it all together and see whether everything lines up. And I'm pleased to say, yes it does. The four countersunk 4BA bolts or machine screws, whatever you want to call them, go into the holes perfectly. Before anybody points this out, I didn't use a countersink. For this job, the countersink left by the centre drill will be fine, even though the angle is slightly wrong. But as I've said many times before, it is not a steam turbine, it is not a part for a satellite or a space rocket. It's just a chimney adapter for an old electric blower. Once I cleaned up the brass part, it looked OK. To finish off the job, I drilled a hole all the way through the side of the piece of aluminium. And whilst it was in the drilling machine, I left the tap in place and started to thread it. Then I finished the job off on the bench using this very useful ratchet tool. I'm going to fit a metric grub screw, because this metric grub screw is the largest one that I have. It's an M8 grub screw, and it's perfect for just clamping the blower in position. And here you can see the finished product. It fits in the top of the chimney quite well. I'm testing the blower using a PP9 battery that I have in the workshop. And as always, it appears to work very well indeed. And the chimney seal is particularly good, better than I thought it was going to be. But I can't just screw this horrible old blower into the top of my new part. So, with my Proxon angle grinder, which is an amazing tool, once again fitted with a flapper wheel, not a cutting disc, I'm removing all the old paint. Or most of it anyway, and now it's into the outer part of the workshop to paint it with heat-resistant paint. And before it had even dried, I fitted it into my adapter. I did this just so the final clip would be a shot of the paint drying, but on a nice base. And that's it for this feature about making a blower extension. I'd just like to say, as always, stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.